Now we are going to look at uh, resolution theorem proving under the context of first order. We have seen some issues when adopting resolution for the first order logic, for example, how to do unification, how variables are managed across different clauses. Uh, once we have the understanding now how we can do it and how it, what kind of proof rules we need. So we have a set of clauses as input, right? So you have a formula F, which is essentially a set of clauses. So if you have a clause uh, from in formula F, you can essentially introduce in your proof, I guess it, an assumption. Remember that in our proof system, there's always was context, right? So this is in this case, it would be F proof C. However, we don't write F proof C because in, in the case of resolution, we remember that the context never changes. The set of clauses remains the same across the proof. So we really don't need to write again and again. Okay, so uh, how do we adopt resolution? Let's suppose you have a two clauses like this, one this and one that, and you have a B and not A. So if A and B somehow we can unify, then we can conclude C or D under the context of unification. So uh, remember that how we were unifying earlier. If I give you A and B and apply MGU from the unification lecture, then you can find that you can have a, some unifier sigma which is most general unifier. You take C or D and then you apply the same unifier there and then you get uh, some clause and that will be the conclusion. Okay, so this is called resolution. Let us look at an example. Let's suppose you want to prove this formula to be always true. Then what do you do? You translate uh, first this formula into FOLCNF and you obtain this clause and this clause. And notice that in both the clauses we have w appearing and uh, both the w's are different and uh, but they are using written using same symbol so we need to whenever we are operating we need to be able to handle that so in in my context i'm simply using different colors so somehow they're saying color also part of the name yeah so uh, uh so how do i resolve i have this clause and this clause and then i have to unify these two so I can take red W and map it to FW and Y maps to C and gives the unifier and then you derive false. Yeah. And therefore this formula is unsat, therefore original goal was valid. Okay. So uh, so that's how resolution proofs work. Okay. So uh, now let us look at another example. Okay, you have two clauses like this FXY or QI and not the XX or r of f of x okay so uh, x within a clause should be treated as same variable so this x uh, this x is same as this x okay but this x is different from those x's okay so uh, if we unify p x y and not p y x x we obtain x red x maps to x and y maps to blue x so we obtain this uh, clause finally q of x r of f of x so you get this this output okay so now a natural question comes why are we using mgus why not any unifier okay so uh, keeps maximum amount of generality in the consequence okay so this is the reason actually we can use any unifier however mgus ensure that we don't lose generality very quickly and our ability to prove things in future becomes too restrictive and uh, keeps our options open okay so so, so let's see let's look at an example okay so you had we saw this uh, uh, clause and this another clause and what we could have done x maps to d and this red x also maps to d and y maps to d if you do that this guy will becomes p d d and the d d and then it will say oh you can now resolve and then you get the conclusion uh, q d or r f d please check yourself also if we do this uh, now it has become very specific clause it has no more variables and uh, if you want to unify something with uh, something else let's say q of c it cannot be this part cannot be unified there's no advantage of doing this See, if we had used MGU, which we have seen last time, we obtained this and we can always get to this more specific clause by applying another uh, 
substitution okay just because mgus gives you something which can always be go you can go down to the uh, less general unifier so therefore you can always derive the thing you may want to derive more specific things you want to derive so you can always go from more general to more specific but once you get to specific there's no way going back therefore it's always good to maintain mgus are we done with resolutions i mean have we handled all possibilities in resolution not uh, there is an a pesky issue of a, a, within a clause a similar little showing up but they are not actually being equal in the in the case of proposition logic if a literal let's say not x3 repeats then you very easily see they are repeating and then you say okay don't 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 repeat it just just write one x3 this issue becomes worse in the case of first order logic things are very similar and they are there they don't look exactly the same Okay. So what can happen is you can have a several uh, literals appearing in your clause, let's say L1 to LK, and some way there is a way to unify L1 to LK. There is a unifier which make them equal. Okay, if that is possible, what you can do is essentially keep one copy of them and apply sigma and reduce the size of the clause. And this can very well happen. So this rule is called factor rule. Okay. You may be wondering why this is important. Okay, so uh, let me give you an example. Let's suppose you have this clause Px or Py. Okay, so this is for all x, y, either Px or Py. You can easily see that actually implies that the P is true on all x's or all y's. Okay, so it is not very uneconomical way of, of saying uh, P is true on all x's. Okay, but uh, the clause as it's it is as it is it's written in a very inefficient way so okay, how can i get rid of an extra p you can see that a resolution will not resolve this problem okay so this, this you can't get rid of this resolution itself you need another rule so essentially what you need the factor rule which which basically says x and y i will map them together and then you unify them and then then apply this unifier and then derive px okay? and you can easily see uh, this is also a correct rule in terms of our uh, original uh, proof rules of the proof system. Please go and check that this proof rule is also a valid proof rule. Okay, so so is factor rule necessary? Are there situations without factor rules cannot you cannot do anything? Here's an example. Let's suppose you have uh, uh, this clause which we have just seen and they have a similar clause which is not px or not py okay so you can see from from here you can derive p is always true on x's and p, here you can derive p is not true on all x's therefore you can say that there's a contradiction but how i progress with with only resolution okay so if you just apply resolution you will get px or not py okay you can just test it that this is, it really happens okay and after this you know better no matter which way in any which way you apply resolution it will not going to work just please go and try and try apply resolution in all three possible clauses in all possible ways uh, you won't make any progress you'll get the same things again and again you need essentially a factor rule okay so then uh, you get px and then similar thing you do on the clause 2 you get not px and then now you get false okay so, uh, so factor was essential. Without that, you will not achieve completeness. So, we have seen three uh, uh, proof rules so far. Uh, one is introduces the clause in a system. Uh, two of them for resolution. And now let's think about equality. How do we go about using equality in our our proof system? So, let's suppose there's a, there's a equality in your clause. S is equal to two T, and there's some uh, address to the clause C. And there is somewhere you have derived D, okay, clause D, which has some term appearing U, okay. And for some reason, you know that you can unify S and U and obtain sigma, okay. And then how do you choose U in a clause D? It's a different question. Let's suppose you have some hunch this U is useful, okay. So you try to unify them. Oh, say, so yeah, it can be unified. So what you can conclude is that c or d okay you drop this equality altogether and and apply this is substitution okay? so basically you replace u by t 
and then you apply this unifier which makes them equal so therefore it's it's a, it's an okay thing to do and then you can just drop x equals to t okay and this is this is is valid conclusion and this is called paramodulation okay so we have them and uh, how do we use them for example you have uh, this kind of a clause and uh, you have this another clause and this is this is fy appearing in q okay so you here you have this is called c this is d and um, what i'm going to do is f of x going to unify with this guy and get it replaced by t okay. so I, I get this this unifier uh, between uh, fx and fy i get x maps to y it's fairly trivial unification and therefore now i can do is that uh, i replace this uh, fx by d okay so then i get this guy get replaced by d and the same uh, unification has to be applied here so then x get replaced by y so we had equality and then we learn how to use equality now let's see we have a disequality that's the last part and then how do we eliminate this equality for example when you reach a final contradiction and there are some things are equal now you say the same things are disequal and then you derive the contradiction right so somehow when you have a disequality you should be able to eliminate disequality from your clause and remove it okay so let's suppose you have a clause like disequality or some other thing then i can do is that i can find if they can unify them t and u okay under that unification i can remove this disequality because once you unify them they become equal and this because of the reflex rule uh proof rule you can say that you, this is not true so you can just get rid of this literal and you'll be left with c sigma fairly obvious and this is called reflexivity and the following derivation remove the literal from the clause okay so for example you have x not equal to fy you can simply unify fx and x and you say x maps to fy and just you say p of fy that's what you're derived out of this uh, uh, application of reflexivity rule so we have seen five rules and there's no other rule to learn and using these five rules i can derive anything on the first order logic i want to derive